Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Lena Patel Live. If this is your first time joining me, welcome. And if you're back after listening one or both of the previous episodes, thank you so much for joining me again. So today I want to do something a little different. While I started this podcast with the intention of giving you tools, strategies, training methodologies, my take on new inventions, ideas that are driving change and can impact your current and your future business growth, I also got messages from people who wanted to know more about my story. So I decided to dedicate this episode to sharing my journey to making work play. So this is the story of how gamulation came into my life. And if you've come across my tagline, bringing the sandbox into the boardroom and wondered what it meant, and by the way, this also happens to be the title of my soon to be released any day now TEDx talk, bringing the sandbox into the boardroom, well, now you know where it came from. I was mentored by my grandfather, who was a direct disciple of Mahatma Gandhi. And as a result of his mentorship, his guidance, the extraordinary relationship that we had for 30, over 30 years, it's impacted my life deeply. I've been involved in activism. It's been a huge part of my life. Even today, I serve on the board of a NGO, a peace organization called Uniting for Peace, And I deliver peace education, peace leadership training, workshops. I speak at their event. It's something that I deeply believe in. But beyond making the world a better place vision that I have, I believe that this transformation comes about when we as individuals actually start to to create this kind of change in our immediate relationships, in our lives, in our workplaces, in our communities. It happens when we instigate change on a smaller level and it happens on an internal level and we have to be living that. That's one of the things that I learned from my grandfather is that leadership begins with every individual stepping up to take personal responsibility for leading themselves before they lead a team and before they lead change. This has been my guiding philosophy in every venture that I have undertaken in my life and I've been very blessed to have been in leadership positions empowering groups and organizations, leading change since the age of 16. I was appointed a young women's leader of an international lay Buddhist organization, and I had the opportunity to work with hundreds of women. And I was only 16, but I was given this role and this responsibility. And kind of my uncle took me by the hand and he said, step up, you can do this. It's not an age thing. It's a it's a wisdom thing. It, you, you will grow into this role and you will learn as you go along. And somebody has clearly seen potential in you. Otherwise, they wouldn't have asked you to step into this role. And so I was responsible for guiding and looking after young women on their career path, supporting them in their life decisions, their personal development, their professional development. And I took it very seriously and I actually loved it. I realized I was actually incredibly good at it. And professionally, in my teens and 20s, I danced professionally at a soloist level. I got to open for Annie Lennox. I toured with a company called Joy. I served as an artistic director of my own company and I got to travel the world. I had a pretty amazing, wonderful time in my life and it was filled with creativity, with music, with self-expression, alongside discipline, grit, you know, really kind of getting into the hard, hard grind of what it takes to be the best at what you do. And so that's driven me my entire life. And play wasn't really in the equation. But I loved what I did so much that I didn't have that distinction between work and play and play and work. Everything just meshed. It just became complete joy, complete service, even when it was challenging, even when it was hard. I loved everything that I did. And when I retired in my 20s and I began coaching other people in the psychology and the training habits for elite performance, it seemed like a natural segue as I had, and I think I still have, or I've been told I certainly have this kind of uncanny knack of being able to see exactly what an individual needs to take them to the next level of world class So word spread and some of the best talent around sought me. I was very fortunate. Um, They sought me out as a coach and a consultant. So at first I worked with athletes like the gymnasts, the synchronized swimmers, the trapeze artists at Cirque du Soleil. I worked with the entertainer Celine Dion. I moved on to teaching these exact strategies to corporations that were looking to step up their performance potential of their CEOs and their executive teams. And 
I felt like I was on top of the world. And then this niggling feeling came that, you know, that feeling that you get in the pit of your stomach. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, where it's like this voice inside your head that says, it's, it's time to do more. You've got to serve more. You're too comfortable. Deep down, I knew there was a bigger mountain for me to climb and more people I wanted to help. I could feel this emptiness starting to creep in. When I trained others, I no longer felt inspired or in flow. I disconnected with my passion and purpose and sense of adventure. I woke up each morning feeling like I was going through the motions. And for the first time in my life, my business had become a job. So soon after, I remember it clearly, it was Christmas and a friend of mine, actually she was a colleague, but someone that became a very close friend of mine over time, she gave me the gift of Play-Doh. And it seems like the smallest gesture, but to me it meant the world. Partly because when I received it, I frowned and this voice in my head said, well, what am I, five? But after reflecting upon it, I was quite stunned at my immediate gut response because I realized in that moment that I really wasn't incorporating fun and play into my daily life. I'd so disconnected from that, certainly not in my work life anymore. And it felt so against my values to create this separation between work and play and to spend the better portion of my day feeling uninspired, unfulfilled, living a less than extraordinary existence. And I immediately set the intention to change this. And it was one evening when I was playing a board game that the penny dropped for me. This was what was missing in my training room. More fun, more play, more games. You know, as children, we intuitively engage in play. I remember doing that. I remember my mom would take me to the park and we'd go play in the sandbox. We played board games, created these make-believe scenarios which fired our creativity and became the breeding ground of new ideas. We innovated by connecting dots. Somehow, as an adult, I felt disconnected from that. I didn't even realize the moment that it happened, but it happened. And it's something that I wanted to bring back into my life, back into the workplace. And I felt that if I was experiencing this, that probably I wasn't the only person. And it turned out that that was the case. I, as I talked to more and more people, they were still feeling that sense of disheartened, disconnection, not engaged, not thriving, not really living their full potential. And so I started experimenting with introducing games and game mechanics into my live pressure cooker business simulations to create an experience of what I call serious fun. And so gamulation was born. And I call it gamulation. It's a word derived from the word game and the word simulation. It combines the playfulness of a live game experience with the realistic pressure cooker situation of a simulation. So you can learn more about my journey of discovery and how gamulation can serve you by watching my TEDx talk, Bringing the Sandbox into the Boardroom. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified when that gets released uh, by TED. But if you've ever seen the video of Steve Jobs speaking at Stanford, you can, you can check that out on YouTube. It's there. It's definitely worth watching. He talks about connecting the dots. And I remember he specifically talked about how he learned calligraphy in college and how that informed the vision that he had for the design of the early Apple computers. So in the same way, my previous world of movement has informed my current world. Because the more that I immerse myself and train others in the principle of gamulation as a training tool for higher engagement, higher learning, higher retention, higher innovation, the more that I see the effect that it has on people's ability to learn and to develop, the more that I realize that engaging our physiology during the learning process makes our brain work better. When we use our body, we think with more clarity, we experience more deeply, and the learning, the retention, the implementation far surpasses traditional learning mechanisms. And while technology has its value in enabling us to build skills through apps and e-learning portals, it cannot replace real face-to-face -face interaction and direct personalized feedback.
So in a way, life has paved the way for me to make play and innovation and human connection the central values in my business. Not only has this changed the way that I work and educate others, it has changed the way that I live and I show up for the people around me. I believe that when we make work play and play work, and bring these two worlds together, we bring the best of who we are into the workplace. I use the metaphor of a sandbox in the boardroom to convey play in a highly structured, highly results-driven environment. So a sandbox represents a space where, as kids, our imagination gives us free reign to dream and build and break down and recreate In the adult world of work, it represents a segment of time dedicated to being uninhibited, open to new experiences, without preconceived ideas of what our play will lead to and what new innovations will emerge. The sandbox in the boardroom represents a paradigm shift in how we need to lead and think and behave to become effective leaders over the next decade. Imagine a world in which we are engaged, inspired, giving our best and fulfilling our highest potential. We can transform the workplace into a happier place. And of course, when the people are happier, everyone benefits. That's the revolution we are creating. A world in which people reclaim their power, learn skills that enable them to make greater professional strides, and change their lives for the better. So I hope this has given you a little bit of of a glimpse into my story and my journey. Please let me know what you think of my story. If you've experienced something similar that you can relate to, that you can connect to, share your experience of what play means to you, particularly in the very serious environment of work. Send me a tweet post a comment on YouTube. I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to feature you in an upcoming podcast. If you have something to share that you think would be relevant for our listeners, then feel free to let me know about that too. Thank you very much for listening and I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode of Lena Patel Live.